A relaxation of Australia's COVID isolation rules could be on the cards this week, with a potential move from seven to five days. National Cabinet is expected to discuss the issue when it meets in Canberra on Wednesday. The New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet has pushed for changes to be considered and has expressed a desire for all states and territories to move together. Let's go straight to political reporter Tom Lowry at Parliament House. Tom, good morning. So what can you tell us about this po possible impending move? Yeah, Michael, the agenda for Wednesday's National Cabinet meeting is still being put together, but it is considered likely that this discussion around isolation rules will be had. This has been talked about, of course, for some time. The most likely move would be from seven days down to five days. This was being considered you know, right back late last year, but has always been pushed off. It is now being considered again. This would put us into line with many other countries around the world. The US, the UK, Canada all have these five-day isolation isolation rules in place. New South Wales has been one of the big drivers here. Dominic Perrottet has expressed a desire for this conversation at the very least to be had, but he wants the entire country to move as one. New South Wales, of course, could go out on his own, but there is a desire to keep all states and territories moving in the same direction at the same pace. So it's likely we will see at least this conversation being had when the state and territory leaders gather here in Canberra on Wednesday. And we'll see what happens after the meeting. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister will set out his government's longer term agenda when he stands up at the National Press Club today. Yeah, Manthony Albanese will mark his first 100 days in office with a speech to the press club talking about some of the achievements his government has made along the way and his case for change over the next three years or so. His line is a culture of cooperation. That's what he wants to create to solve some of the long-term problems facing the country rather than simply apportioning blame. Looking at his achievements, he's going to list things like dealing with the crisis in the national power grid that uh, occurred only a few weeks after he came to office. Keeping foot and mouth out of the country is another one, along with trying to reset relationships with some of Australia's key international partners. Obviously work there towards trying to reset relationships with countries like China and the Solomon Islands. As for the future agenda, he's putting rising wages and rising productivity right at the top, pointing to the job summit that's going to be held in Canberra later on this week. He's already trying to perhaps play down expectations of massive solutions coming out of those two days of meetings, saying it's more important just to get the big decision makers sitting at the same table and having the conversations about trying to start down a path towards solving some of those problems. Tom Lowry at Parliament House, thank you.